Well, everybody, welcome to another Shop Talk, and I am here with Dan Stimson, and Dan, you're a member of the Team No Budget, which I, I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, we actually have a new team member this year, so we have three cars on the team now. Yeah. Uh, he'll be running a hobby stock. Okay, so, so it's, it's going to be Jeff Bridges, Jeff Cowboy Brid or Bridges. <laughs> what am I thinking about? Jeff Cowboy Smith and yourself. and Right, and John King, who's been our crew for the last couple of years, and he's decided that he wants to drive now. So yeah. uh, we sold him my car that I've had for the last two years, and mm -hmm. uh, we're in the process of building a new car for Lakeside this year. And uh, who more or less came up with this name? I think I know, but... Um, a few years back, we all decided we were going to um, buy go-karts, and back then there was um, six of us. So we all went out and bought go-karts, and between all of us, that's yeah. when we decided on the, the name of Team No Budget, because not, none of us had the money to race, but we were doing it anyway. <laughs> so, kind of team up on things and go together. And yeah, you really have to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at 13 years of age, Dan, uh, you moved to Alaska to live with your dad. Yep. Where did you live at in Alaska, and and what was it like living the, uh, that far north? Uh, I lived in Anchorage. Uh, we lived on the outskirts of Anchorage. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was it was the greatest experience. I grew up in the city in. Uh, basically in a bad part of San Diego and mm -hmm. I knew nothing but city so uh -huh. uh, moving up there was a whole different world a whole different life uh, the lifestyle is just different yeah uh, I, I it's, just, it's more like the Midwest people aren't in such a hurry yeah. and a lot friendlier and people go out of their way to help you there yeah. and it's it's a good life my brother was in the Air Force in Alaska and one of the stories that he used to always tell when he came back home was that they had to take their battery in at night Yep. that afraid the battery would freeze. Well, you know, by the time I moved up there, they, they had battery wraps. You just plug your car in. They took care of that, yeah. yeah. What yeah. was the coldest temperature you think you were in? Uh, minus 65. Holy so smokes. On, on the top of a, a mountain pass, uh, uh, Hatcher's Pass, which yeah. we got stuck in a two-wheel drive truck. We didn't have a choice, so... Uh. We spent the night and in minus sixty five. Yes. Oh my gosh. That was warm. The other guy froze. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this: Would a drop of water actually freeze <laughs> if you uh, dropped I believe it so. and would freeze by the time it hit the ground uh, at that temperature? I believe so. Holy smokes! I never tried it, but I I think it would. <laughs> wow. But. This kind of starts your experience in racing, though, in that your dad was involved in hydroplane racing. Yes. Now, did he race in Alaska, or did he travel pretty no, much all over uh, that? The series he raced uh, was just a, a series in Alaska, and they had you know probably a dozen different lakes that they mm -hmm. travel around to and yeah. race at every weekend in the summer. And you have to race every weekend up there because it's a short season. Uh -huh. Of course, one of the other things that just sort of pops into my mind that I didn't write down is, but what was the water temperature? I mean, you probably didn't Cold. want to get in the water, did no, you? No, no. Uh, you get kicked out of those boats occasionally. And, uh, I was just a crew member, so I didn't have to get in the water. Yeah. But, uh, a couple of guys got thrown out, and they're hypothermic in a few minutes. A few minutes, yeah. wow. <laughs> Most of the... Yeah. Most of the lakes are glacier fed, so yeah. you're guaranteed it's going to be cold. What uh, what kind of speeds were your dad running in those hydroplanes? Uh, I'd say probably 120. Yeah, uh, they were 280 hydros, so they're right in between something like the Miss Budweiser and what an outboard okay. race boat. So they're they're about in in between there. Yeah, you're talking about them little bitty boats that when they turn they go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, his was a lot bigger than that. Yeah, okay. But those things amaze me, the way they, they turn come up quick. to a buoy or whatever. And I mean, they're just... Boom. The first time I went to a race with him, I'd never seen anything like it. And they had probably 100 yards of rooster tail, and I was oh, hooked. Yeah. So... They are fun to watch. We've had them around yep. here in Kansas City just a little bit, as I recall. They run Smithville, Lake of the Ozarks, I think. But well, we just don't get to see them a lot. But they are fun to watch. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, after that... In your 20s, 
you start doing just a little bit of drag racing and uh, what type of car were you running and uh, what was the class that you were in when you were drag racing uh, i ran a monza two plus two and uh it was an et class so it was just bracket racing you yeah. go out and run your numbers yeah uh, we had just a, a stock 350 in it the first year and of course the next year we spent a whole lot of money and mm -hmm. after that uh I had a, a child and moved back to California, so that was kind of it for racing yeah. for several years. Man, you used to living on the beach. Man, that had to be quite a change yeah. going from the beach to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's crazy. I mean, that's that's a big difference. That's, uh, that's uh, really warm weather to really cold weather. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, you were um, also involved in some... Uh, Go karts, as you said. Yeah. Now, you raced at Lazowski Speedway, I think it was. Yeah, and, and there. Yeah, during the winter we'd run the state fair and uh, Lazowski during the summer. Yeah. Uh, I think we did that for probably three years. Mm -hmm. And after going upside down and breaking my ribs, and two weeks later doing it again, mm -hmm. I decided I wanted a roll cage back around me. Yeah. And, uh, at that point, uh, Jeff bought his uh, Grand National, and about two months later, we ended up buying a, a street stock for mm -hmm. me. So uh, we found out it's just as much money to run a street stock as it is a go kart. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to wonder which one you're going to go to, go with the big car. <laughs> go with the big car, more protection. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's a lot more fun. There's a lot more power under your foot. Mm -hmm. Um, go karts are great and they're a good place to learn and I, I really believe a lot of people could use a, a little bit of that mm -hmm. uh, before they step into something bigger but uh, if all you can afford is one or the other I'd go with a, yeah. a street stock okay. just before we get into the into your actual racing bio I just wanted to point out that you were the crew chief for Jeff Smith on his one of his cars and yeah, he had a sprint car we ran the uh, o'reilly's mscs series for several years and um when he got out of that then uh i crewed for uh, uh chase austin for one year in mm -hmm. the same uh series and then uh the year after that uh, i crewed for a guy named keith freddington okay so once we got that far uh Keith got out of racing. That's when we all decided to buy go karts. Oh, and okay. There was uh, four of us uh, that were crewing on his car, and we ended up buying six carts. I'll be darned. So sounds like it'd be fun. Right? It, it, to me, I, I rode motorcycles, and it was so much more fun when it was like you say four or five six guys that you knew and you just kind of went out and oh, yeah. had a blast at it and, and we we're all or four of us were running the super heavy class so we we're actually racing each other mm -hmm. every week yeah so yeah that made it definitely uh, interesting yeah it makes it more fun like i say i think when you got somebody in the class or whatever that you yeah, know that yeah, you're running and with they're all competitive so of course just about anybody in a race car is competitive yeah <laughs> there's not too many of them that's not in 2006, you buy a factory stock for $2,000, yep. and you start racing at Lakeside. With the experience, uh, Dan, that you already had, what was the biggest thing that in racing this factory stock that you had to learn about that sport as far as doing that? Um, I would say setups have uh, probably the biggest impact on anything you do on the track and uh, you know having prior experience with the smaller sprint cars and the go-karts um, you have a little bit of understanding but it's still not all that easy uh, you have to keep trying different things and my style of driving is different from somebody else so you know even though they give me their setup mm -hmm. and it works great for them it doesn't necessarily work for me so I think we're uh, going into the fifth year now we're building a new car we have a much better understanding of how these street stocks work mm -hmm. so um i fully expect to go out there and run up front every week well it, there has to be some comfort in also knowing what you got under you in that man you did it with these here oh absolutely and, and you've got i would have to think a little bit better understanding of, of what there is there yep yep and i've got a a couple guys that uh, 
are pretty good and have run at Lakeside quite a bit that mm -hmm. uh, have come over and helped us uh, get this car mm -hmm. where it needs to be. So yeah, I've talked with so many guys about this too. Is I think a lot of racers are willing to help you to a point. <laughs> yeah, but again, and, like, like I already stated, uh, what works for Bear Christie uh, isn't going to work for me. Mm -hmm. My my style of driving is going to be a little different. It gets me a little closer if I'm way out of the ballpark, which, of course, with a $2,000 factory stock, mm -hmm. I was way out of the ballpark. Uh -huh. That first year, I felt good if I could get out of the B into the A. Uh -huh. um, but then we realized that that car was bent and we went to another car and instantly we were we were getting top 15s top 10s every week uh-huh well, what is it like running at lakeside with the nine to one motor uh i know it's got to have some kind of special thing that you need to do to run with that type of motor when you're racing well absolutely it goes back to the go-karts and a go-kart if you let out of the gas you've lost uh, it's, a, it's a momentum track, mm -hmm. and with a f uh, factory stock, if you've got the right setup and you can keep your momentum into the corner and not have to lift, you're going to run up front. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's what we try and do every week, but, yeah. you know, track changes, our setup gets off, and uh, it's still a guessing game on a lot of nights, but uh, I think we're going to mm -hmm. find we're a lot better as we go into this next year you know and i think in the factory stock in particular at lakeside that this is where this experience factor that we've talked about comes in as far as the setup in that every week you know you've got probably five six seven guys that are always you know they're right there with the setup and they're and spot super on. competitive a absolutely and it doesn't make any difference whether it's a tacky track or a dry slick or yep. whatever they're there they, they know how to read it and how to do it and that, that's what you're trying to figure yeah. out that comes from time seat seat time uh and being at that track right so I like Lakeside. Uh, I like the high speeds. Yeah. So for me, it, it the first couple times out, I was a little nervous. Once you figure out that this car will go through the corner, uh -huh. uh, that all goes away, and it's time to race and time to be competitive. Yeah. I think you somewhat answered this question once already, but why Lakeside? Uh, well. We bought the first car, and all it had was a Lakeside legal motor. Mm -hmm. um, so when I rebuilt the motor, I spent a lot of money on a 9-to-1 motor to run at Lakeside. Mm -hmm. uh, I still have that motor. I can't afford to build another one, hopefully mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll worry about the new car this year. We've still got a good piece of, uh, that Don Burlington built for us. and So... The other reason is it's 15 minutes from the house. <laughs> that's, that's a big deal, especially now at gas at yeah, almost it, 350 a gallon. Yeah, it didn't cost me $60 to yeah. get to the track. Yeah, right. Um, are there any wins or losses that stand out in your mind, Don, in, in so far in this five years that you've been racing at Lakeside? Um, well, I've got a couple uh, heat race wins, uh, a couple B main wins, no no A's yet. Uh, uh, my best finish at Lakeside was a third, mm -hmm. uh, and that was a legitimate third, so yeah. I was pretty proud of it. Yeah. Um, the thing that stands out would probably be the first uh, race of the first October fast. And I went out in my heat, there was seven cars in that heat and out of the seven five of them were big motors from other tracks mm -hmm. and this uh, was a border war deal yeah, or, or run, well the combination yeah run what you brought yeah and uh i outran all of them till the last lap i had yeah. one get me on the last lap so that would probably be my most memorable yeah memorable time okay that that has proved to be an interesting series i think and uh from what I've seen as a fan, it hasn't totally played out like I think a lot of people thought it would in that these cars from other tracks would come in there and dominate. And it hasn't necessarily shown up that way. No, what I watched uh, and raced against last year, which I only got to six races last year because of money, but mm -hmm. uh, I could run with them. So 
uh, after watching him run for about two weeks at the first of last season, mm -hmm. I wasn't worried about it. The guys that run there every week, we definitely have an advantage. We know what the track does, what it's going to act like, mm -hmm. how it's going to change through the night. So uh, I think that definitely put it equal footing. They may have had more horsepower, but uh -huh. you, you have guys that know how to drive that track. Exactly. And I think that if you give these guys enough time, it could go that way, but uh, this year they've pretty much opened up the rules on our chassis, and so we're going to see what it's going to be like this year. I think you and I were talking on the phone, and I, I, you were telling me, because I have never read the rules for the chassis, but I believe you were telling me that they're really only about that much away from my MCA. I set both sets of rules in front of me, and I didn't find much difference. Uh -huh. Uh, which is fine with me, and if they go that way, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. um, next year, I'm going to build a motor to go run short track, and uh, if Lakeside stays nine to one, we've got a nine to one motor. Mm -hmm. If uh, they decide to go the other way, uh, that's fine. That gives me yeah. that much more places to race. Ready either way, just yeah. let her go, <laughs> whatever exactly. it's going to be. Uh, new car this year, sitting yep. right here behind us. You guys are. Getting close, like say you don't know if you're quite going to be ready for practice, but uh, you're, you're I don't shooting. think so. We're, <laughs> uh, I've got a marriage coming up next oh, yeah. week, so well, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Uh, things are put on hold until after that. Oh, I could imagine. <laughs> uh, we've still got a little fabrication to do on the car, and the chassis has to go to paint and then get mm -hmm. assembled. So uh, I don't know. Sometime in May. <laughs> <laughs> um, First of all, who's chassis or who's building the car, and who's, who's supplying the power? Okay, well, Don Burlington supplies the power. Uh, I've been friends with Donnie for several years, his son, uh, and he's the reason why I'm using a Burlington motor. Mm -hmm. uh, I am going on my third season with the same motor. Wow. Last year was six races. <clears throat> the year before was eight races. The year before that was 13, so do the math. Mm -hmm. I've got a little over a year on it, and uh -huh. it's been no problem. So uh, I would recommend Don to just about anybody. Right. Uh, team No Budget built this car, and that would be myself, Jeff Cowboy Smith, and John King. Mm -hmm. And we all three run the Burlington Motors. We're sold on that guy. Pretty sold on <laughs> it, yeah. Well, I haven't heard too many bad things about Burlington, so I, I no, think you're, I you're, you're, you well. you're in the right boat, it sounds yep. like. Everybody's got folks behind them, and they do all that extra stuff that helps get them on the track each week. Uh, could you name just a few of the, the folks? I think you've already yeah, talked I, about uh, it a lot, but uh, also I, some sponsors in yeah. there if you've got some for this year. Uh, as far as the sponsors go, I think a lot of racers are going to identify with the fact that there's just no money out there. Mm -hmm. um, my girlfriend's sister, she owns a daycare, uh, and they sponsor the car. It's Creative Kids. They have three different centers, um, wow, one, yeah, one nice. on Barry Road, uh, one in Gladstone, and one in Tracy, Missouri. Okay. And then Air Care stepped up this year and uh, put money on all three of the Team No Budget cars. Oh. So that's it as far as sponsors easy to remember easy to remember gonna have a lot of room on the car folks <laughs> so if you want to sponsor a factory stock dan is more than willing to uh, or, or at least maybe if you want to paint the chassis for me yeah there you go that, that'd get us a long ways yeah uh and of course i've got to thank my girlfriend kim uh we've been together four years and mm -hmm. she absolutely loves the racing and without somebody like that behind you you're not going to do this yeah it takes the whole family. When people say, oh, it's not a family sport anymore, they haven't come down to the pits where I pit. Yeah. With everybody around me, it's all family. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I love this sport. Yeah. That, that and we get to pray yeah. before we race. Yeah. You know, you see that a lot at Lakeside. I, I don't know if you could go actually in hardly any pit at Lakeside and there not be a friend, a brother, a sister, a mom, a dad, wife. Or somebody, or all of them, <laughs> or all of them, in that area, and that I'm not going to say that's unique to Lakeside, but I think you do see it a lot there. Yeah. It does make a great experience out of it. Absolutely, and then uh, 
always Jeff Smith. He uh, helped me purchase my first car, uh, helped me purchase my second car, and has helped me build the third one. Mm -hmm. So without a doubt, Jeff. And then our crew uh, member, John King, uh -huh. who now will be his crew this year because uh, I'll run at Lakeside Fridays and John will be running uh, I-35 on Saturday. So mm -hmm. uh, it's an all-in-the-family deal. Yeah. Jeff, we tip our hats at you, buddy. <laughs> Ain't Thank got my you. cowboy hat tonight, but <laughs> we do it he, anyway. He's working on his car tonight, and I'm not there. So. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I better kiss a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dan. I right. uh, appreciate you sitting down and talking with us. And, folks, that's going to wrap it up for another shop talk here with Dan Simpson, factory stock driver at Lakeside Speedway. Uh, Dan, I don't know about you, but, Betty, I'm ready to hit the track. Absolutely. If we can get a car together, we're ready to. Yeah, let's go <laughs> racing.